So what's up guys, this is Sean Tan and welcome back to the channel. This is a very different segment altogether because you can see this lady over here, my very own coach in Far Capital. So even in investment, I have a coach and she is the head of mortgage, right? So that's a earlier episode for the podcast that you guys can go check it out about her background and all. After doing this for a while, I noticed that I don't talk a lot about loan eligibility, like what are the different types of mortgage available? What's the difference between higher purchase, personal loan, credit card, housing loan? I'm not that interested in them. I understand them, but <laughs> that's why I got my coach in because she is the one that actually looks through all and she is the one that I go to like, every now and then when there's announcement or whatsoever. And the thing about this kind of loan, right? It's always changing. Whenever there's a new DSR or Bank Negara have this new revision, everything change again, right? So um, without further ado, you want to say hi to everybody? Hello, hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Rina here. <laughs> uh, so, so rude. I just take over and start the show. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I think let's start with the very basic stuff. I think if you are very advanced, this may not be for you. But the goal is to always understand a different segment about property investment. Like now we look into rooms we look into different ceiling heights floor materials after you pick right then mm. the loan comes <coughs> in mm. there's a whole different segment altogether Correct. All right yeah so that's why i got rena and i forgot you guys don't have rena <laughs> so i'm so spoiled anyway so first of all let's go into the different types of interest, interest rates rate. right mm. to me it sounds like different type of loan but she calls it interest rate so uh, care to elaborate okay typically the famous one today type of interest rate we can break it down into two mm. different types first one is the fixed rate mm. second one which is the we call it the effective uh, rate or balance reducing rate mm. okay so first one if we talk about fixed rate common one where people nowadays they take the fixed rate is uh, first one personal loan mm. second one higher purchase balance reducing rate example typical famous one of course is housing loan mm. followed by your credit card and the third one may be overdraft mm. so these five things is the common one where nowadays we call it the different type of interest rate mm. but however when we talk about really the breakdown on mm. how the bank actually be profitable to earn from your interest rate mm. is actually different calculation. Okay. okay that's why why some of the situation we don't really encourage people to take a personal loan rather than a housing loan, especially mm. when you want to do a debt consolidation. Mm, mm. Okay, so maybe I'll give you some example of the calculation here. Of it? course, that's why you're here. My <laughs> so rare we got something to write on. Sean always do this air thing. Yeah. Okay, first one, let's look at fixed rate. Okay. This feels like a seminar though. Mm. Can see actually. Okay. 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 First one, fixed rate, like I mentioned just now, we have two different, uh, the, the main one where people take the uh, uh, fixed rate will be first one, the personal loan. Mm. Second one will be the higher purchase. Mm. Oh. Higher purchase are for cars. Uh, Correct, for car loan. Uh, okay. Higher purchase, I said last time, I don't know why that. Ah, so when you see here, example, right now you are taking a personal loan, i just give an example, personal loan here at 100k. Okay, mm. let's say you are taking over the tenure of 10 years. Okay. Okay. Normally, nowadays, personal loan depends on which bank you are currently borrowing with. La. We are okay. looking at a range of maybe 5 to 6%. Fixed rate. Mm. Okay, 5 to 6%. So, the calculation here is that how it works. La. What you can do here is your 100,000, you multiply by the interest rate that the bank borrowed to you. Okay, so in this case, 6%. Multiply by, for example, in this case, will be the 10 years of the loan tenure already. So 10 years. <coughs> and then you just divide by total of your whole loan tenure on a monthly basis. Mm. So in this case, 10, 10 years, 12, then 12, you are right. So it's 120. Mm. So 100,000, 6%, 6,000. Mm. 6,000 multiplied by 10 years, 60,000. Mm. So it's total at 160,000. You divided by 120 months. So roughly your monthly commitment will be around 1,003 lah. Mm. Okay. Average. Okay. So when you guys see the figures here, you will realize that your total interest over 10 years, uh, this 60,000 uh, from here, 100,000 mm. 100, of 6% is already lump sum added into the original loan borrowing amount, which is 100,000. Mm. So total is 160,000. Mm. 
So break it down into a monthly basis, in this case, will be 1,333. Yep. So this is an example of fixed rate, right? And fixed rate means whether you settle early or not, mm. it's already incurred. Right, because like you see, how do you derive the monthly repayment? It's already tabulated from the start. Even if let's say at year five, mm. I am rich for whatever reasons, I cannot total or whatever, then I want to settle early. It's not going to help me save any more interest Correct. because the interest is already from the front incurred into it. Correct. Right. So this is for personal loan. What other fixed rates there are? So car, car loan. That's the two famous one lah. Uh, so that's why the very huge debate between car loans and housing loan. If I were to have 100,000, should I settle my car or should I settle my house? Financially, to save money, you want to settle the house. But I think because that's the different calculation for interest, right? But you settle your car early, right? Interest is already incurred. So there's not much of a point. Unless you want to clear off your secrets to buy more properties, that's a whole different story, right? Yeah. So I think this is a classic fixed rate. Yep. Maybe you want to save up space here because we don't we don't have enough papers. <laughs> Show me this is cheap skate paper. I should have moved here, right? Never mind, never mind. Okay. So the other ones, uh, so the next one you're gonna share with us is the. Then I'll show you guys technically the second one, which is the effective rate. So yeah. we call it the balance reducing rate. Mm, uh. mm. So I put it here. Yeah, just some context, right? I just grabbed her in without much preparation. Uh, because I felt that you guys really need this kind of tuition. <laughs> okay, balance mm. reducing rate, uh, typical, like I mentioned just now, housing loan, credit card, and your overdraft. So mm. just take an example of a uh, housing loan, right, in this mm. case. Housing loan, credit card, OD stand for overdraft. I can brief a little bit later on. Okay. Mm. So let's look at first one. We just take the example, the same one like the previous uh, uh, personal loan. Okay? Mm. But of course, housing loan amount, 100k <laughs> today. <laughs> very hard you can buy a housing loan, you know, at, what, what, at 100k. Uh. So take a typical one at 500,000. Okay? Loan tenure, we are looking at 35 years. Mm. Okay? Uh, your monthly commitment, this one I need some calculator first. Mm. Yeah, while you guys are calculating, some context here is because I recently got into a lot of questions from you guys asking about where do I put my money apparently I always thought people got no money and I was wrong now a lot of people got money don't know where to put so if you want to get more properties or you want to allocate to save money or interest so these are the basics and I realized that not everyone knows this this was not taught in school so teacher Rina will be here okay this one, no, no egg actually it's a little bit <laughs> So if you guys see here, there's one thing I think uh, you guys can download. It's called the Carl's uh, Mortgage Calculator. Okay, it's very easy. You just put in, for example, a loan amount of uh, 500,000 here, 3.3 .3 interest rate, 35 years. Basically, your monthly commitment is about roughly about 2,000. Okay, so how it works here is that this 2,000 ringgit actually is contribute to both two things. Mm. First one is your interest. Mm. Second, we call it your principal. So this is why I talk about interest, right? Yeah. Okay, so this one, when it comes to the balance reducing, you've got two contributions. First one is the interest. Second is the principal. So normally, when you take a 35 years loan tenure, right, you will realize when you look into a secret, your first 10 years, 15 years, macam tak jatuh je. Mm. Same, you know, your, your principal amount. Because majority will be actually contributed to your interest portion. Mm. Uh, roughly about 70%. Yep. 70, 30, if let's say today is 35 years. Mm. So in this case, it will be about... 1,300 to the interest and 700 ringgit into your principal. Mm. Okay, so the differences when you look into it, this interest portion is actually reducing on a daily basis. Mm. Okay, let's relate it back to the personal loan here. Imagine today your housing loan is 500k and your personal loan is 100k and you have got like Sean mentioned right you're gonna total mm. okay you got extra one I'm not encouraging gambling I just so happen you got money in the bank okay, okay. Ah. so let's take an example mm. suddenly from somewhere you know your parents are pharma whatsoever mm. that you get extra 100,000 and you mm. would like to settle think about it personal loan or housing loan first right mm. so 100,000 imagine today you got 100,000 you want whether you want to use it to settle part of your 500,000 mm. or you want to settle part of your uh, 100k. So in this case, let's look into it here is that you what you can do here is that you open back to your cow's mortgage calculator, look into the table segment here, you will realize that actually 
your interest portion is actually reducing on a monthly basis, mm. whereas principal is increasing. Mm. Okay. However, look into just now example for personal loan, you will realize that this one, the interest is actually fixed. Mm. Monthly, for example, this one, 100K, 6,000. So on a monthly basis, you, you, are, you are actually paying 6,000, 6,000, 6,000. First year, yep. even the 10 year, also 10,000. Yep, yep. Okay. So, okay, just to sum it all up again, right? Because that's how mortgage bankers talk, right? <laughs> you listen to it, like, what is she rapping about? Okay, uh, whenever you have a money installment where you can get from mortgage calculators, right? So just that, that one, she used a little bit more advanced where let's say it calculates out 2,000 and we all stop there. Okay, I need to know that I want to afford to buy, I use 2,000. Then I times three, my income needs to be around 6,000 before I can afford the loan, mm. right? That's how we calculate. There's another deeper manner where you have monthly repayments now. So money repayments, the first 10 years, right, is going to be very heavy interest. It makes sense because bank needs to make the money first. <laughs> so whenever you settle for the first 10 years, really just that you think that, oh, my house is almost going to be paid up fully not really and this disappoints a lot of old people and old folks why my housing loans is left a lot because of the apportionment of the 2000 bucks 70 percent is very heavy on interest so banks get their cake first before it settles your debt okay so the difference is here across time 35 years the principles reduce, although slowly, but it still reduces. Therefore, the interest amount also reduces because you pay a major portion heavy on first. For the personal loan, it's going to be the same all the while. So what Rina just said, if I have a lump sum amount, mm. do I settle personal loan or do I settle housing loan? So I, it, it makes more sense to put in here straight away to the principal and there's a way to do it also. Mm. I think last time I paid straight up into the account mm. and they didn't settle the principal. Mm. They just mm. put it into the account, which yeah, is sure. weird. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so if you want to settle the principal for the personal loan, there's no so-called principal or interest because it's already all tabulated. I think the one that Sean mentioned will be the... Something we call it the full flexi one. Mm -hmm. So this is for the... Housing loan. Housing loan already. Okay. Ah. Mm. Uh, in this case, for example, if you have, <clears throat> back to just now, total, right? you have extra savings. So you want to jump out this extra 100,000 to save on your interest. Mm. So think about it. You want to settle the personal loan mm. or the housing loan, right? That was the question just now. So look into this example here. If you today holding a housing loan account and you actually go for full flexi loan. Mm. So full flexi actually tied with one thing, we call it the current account. Mm. Okay, if let's say you go for semi-flexi stuff like that, it's actually the savings account. Mm. Okay, so current account and then we look at very important we talk about right now, which is the interest, right? Mm. And then the principal. So back to just now the uh, amount of 100, 500k. Mm. Assuming today your 100k, you don't, you don't, you choose to uh, settle your personal loan. Mm. So in this case, it will be zero, right? Mm. So your interest back to just now calculation is 1,300 and your principal is actually contributed 700. Yes. Remember just now the situation? Mm. Okay, imagine today you choose to actually use the 100,000. So in this case, no longer 500. It will be left with 400k. Mm. So your interest in this case oh, here mm. will be maybe at 1,000 ringgit and your principal at 1,000 ringgit. So see here, you put in an extra prepayment of 100,000, your interest is actually calculated based on 400,000 mm. instead of 500. And your interest is actually reducing. Mm. And it will contribute more to your principal. Okay, let's look at an example of a personal loan. Mm. Imagine today, personal loan. You don't have any current account because it's not housing loan account. Okay, your interest portion versus the principal. 100k. Okay, just now the example of your uh, interest on monthly basis is about 1,333 like that. Mm. Okay, imagine today you use a 100k, you settle. Mm. Here. Then in this case, your interest will be zero. Mm. But what if today, you don't have, you're, you're, you're outstanding at 100k, you only settle 
50k. What will be your interest actually? What do you guys think? Interest is the same. Uh, one interest three, is the same. One, three, three, three. <laughs> but you see the difference or not? You do a 100k here, mm. your interest is actually reducing. Okay. But you do a, a, a certain amount of uh, extra payment for your personal loan, your interest contribution is the same. Yep. No matter year one, no matter year nine, year ten. Mm. So that's why we say, in what situation should you actually take fixed rate versus balance reducing rate, right? Mm. If you know the differences. Mm. Mm. So, okay. My question uh, here is that, uh, no, the question I think the audience will have is, the amount will stick the same, right, still? Like, like the 2000 here and 2000 here. Correct. Your monthly commitment will be still the same. Mm. But think about it. This one just now we give an example of your housing loan. We are taking at about 35 years loan tenure, right? Mm. Okay. So if let's say you do an extra payment of this 100,000, your interest portion is already reducing. So which means your tenure from 35 years may be reduced to 20 years, 25 years. Oh, so every time we pay, let's say I put in the account. Mm. Then I will write to the banker, say I want to settle the principal, mm. 100,000. Then they will retabulate to me again. So technically that one, we call it as a different, different banks, they use different terms. Mm. So they call it prepayment or extra payment. Mm. Ah, so extra payment and prepayment also uh, depends on whether you take the full flexi loan. Some mm. of it, you take the semi flexi loan. Ah. But both also actually contribute to your interest portion one. Mm. So instead of paying 35 years, you do extra payment. Your loan tenure may be shortened down to 25 years, depends how much you do it. Mm. Because the interest is actually reducing on a daily basis already. Rather than you look at personal loan, if you take a loan tenure of 10 years, no matter your champa, no matter how much of a money, unless you settle the full lump sum, your interest will still be the same. Mm. Mm. Then, okay, my second question. Um, now there are financial institutions that give fixed rates versus mm. flexi rates. Mm. Mm. Uh, is it the same thing? Okay, so so like for example, the one that I'm applying AIA, currently, AIA, right? AIA. AIA. so that's fixed rate. So uh. fixed rates and flexi rates, based on my understanding, it's one will not be affected by the OPR change. Correct. Very simple, like my mm. question, right? It's really like my AIA loan mm, versus mm. my bank Sotong Bank, May Bank, mm, eh, bank, mm. bank Harimau loan. Mm. What's the difference then? Like what's the fixed rate and what's a... Uh, Flexi rate. Is it the same like flexi loan and full flexi loan? It's a two different things. It's thing. a two different things. Okay. So how to break it down this one? Um mm. fixed rate is something that it will not be affected by the OPR change mm. in this case. Okay. So for example, your fixed rate, just now the situation as you are taking a 100 k loan mm. over a six percent over a 10 years. Mm. So you already tied to this interest rate at six percent. Mm. However, if let's say today you are taking uh, the housing loan, which is affected by the OPR in this case, mm. so your interest is actually calculated based on the differences of the base rate, la, which mm. is actually uh, depends on your OPR, your BR, how mm. much. So this one will be affected. But however, when you back to the fixed rate, it will be fixed on whatever your letter of interest rate. Mm. Uh, so this, this one makes the differences. Mm. But most of the time, based on experience, uh, a lot of people thought that they can just lock in the rate that they want, which is uh -huh. uh, the sweet dreams that all of us want. La. Okay, now OPR very low, I go and sign up a fixed rate, mm. which doesn't happen. La. So it's by, it's a rate that is provided by the financial institution themselves. Mm. So they will tell you that, okay, now we got promotion, it's 3.2, mm. the mm. one that I'm going to get right now. So it's 3.2, where the OPR now is around 3.15. Mm. Then mm. a the fixed rate kind of makes sense. Yep. Correct. Right. So, uh, but when OPR drop, mm. then I'm paying more than everyone else. Correct. But when OPR goes up, then I'm paying less lah. Mm. So, some people like fixed amount. Some people don't like the fluctuating one. Mm. So, to me, it's the same. But that's a whole different topic altogether. Where I'm doing that, so that I can clear off my secrets, and yep. that's something that we will talk on the next episode lah. Right. Mm. So I think here for this episode, right, it illustrates two different interest calculation method one is the yep. fixed one is the reducing one reducing one mm. and it's a very different thing everyone thought that buy a car buy a house take credit card same different so if you want to save money on interest and this is how the rich gets richer lah, right if i have the same amount uh fifty thousand, where do i put and what do i do and 
if you this is a rule that I live by my family members that if you cannot afford a car within five years you cannot afford the car because for example if the car is hundred thousand let's say right hundred thousand wow now got promotion right but it's three percent and we times how many years right we don't know how many years and the interest is actually tabulated directly Oh, you, you take three years loan. Okay, so it's 9%. So now the car is 109. If you take nine years, so it's 27,000. So your loan amount is 127,000. And within year five, you want to settle everything. What's the point? Because you are paying for the long-term facilities mm. anyway. So it reduces your monthly cash flow. So you have better money to spend. Yeah, so it's a very important Thing to, to see especially this part I think the major takeaway right will be this one mm, your, your, your interest portion actually yeah yeah oh. so interest versus principal that's a very important thing where it's not only the total 2000 where I see can buy or not <laughs> so this is after buying right this is really after buying every year you get bonus if you do well I guess if you're watching the channel you will do well I hope <laughs> then you get bonuses then what do you do with the bonus it's either you get a new car which is not directly advisable or you want to settle your housing loans mm. yeah so newspaper also recently announced that a lot of people are getting bankrupt in Malaysia mm. 35 to 40 over it's because of personal loan and credit card debts so I think like just share a bit right she always tell me this one like credit card what's the interest rate ah? 18. 18, yeah. Uh, if I'm you sorry. don't pay the whole year, la, it's 18% a year, you know. Personal loan is 6. 5, Five to, to 6. Yeah, 6 depends on which bank. Mm. Higher purchase is around 3. Yeah, three. Right, 3. <laughs> Housing loan, uh, I got my latest one was 2.9. Depends on when you buy. Right, yeah. based on the OPR and based on the amount, the higher loan amount, the lower interest rate. Mm. Right, because the interest amount a lot, ma. <laughs> so if you look at it, right, everyone says that housing loan is very expensive. Not really. An OPR change affects this way more. Not housing loan that much, lah. Right, and I guess that's all. Anything you want to add for this episode? I think I'm good. Uh. <laughs> Sean basically already wrapped everything. No, like, because I find it very difficult to tabulate all this like that. Like. I never I mean in a simple way. Uh, yeah. To really know how much contributed to the interest versus the principal. Actually, a lot of people do know that this fixed rate, actually, you are paying more on the interest portion. You don't contribute anything on the principal at all. Oh, I have another question. Mm. Okay, so now every month, right, it's 2000 right, here. Yep. So my question now is, now every month I pay 2000 2000 month. So what happens now if I want to pay 2500 a month since mm. I got a promotion? Mm. I want to reduce, I want to settle my house loan faster. Mm. What happens here? Mm. Uh. Okay, I think it's very simple. First of all, you need to identify currently are you taking flexi loan, full flexi or semi-flexi. Mm. Okay, before you can even put in an extra payment of 500 in this case, Semi-flexi in this case, you will actually most most probably have to walk into the counter or you have to register, uh, mm. fill in a form to mm. tell the bank that you want to do an extra payment. Because uh, in the really? bank side, they were uh. assuming that on a monthly basis, you need to pay the 2000 uh. So even on the deduction on monthly basis, they will just withdraw 2000 uh. even though you pay 2500 So the money will just be stored there, right? So the 500 will actually bring in to the next, next month. month. Yeah, look, that, that, okay, the why I brought it, this is exactly what happened to me. I thought, right, I put in three months up front and, oh, I can get to save interest. No, the money is just yep. there. Yeah. So this is for full flexi, and this is for fixed. Th this is, okay, if let's say in the event, you want to actually pay the extra amount of money, right, you will first of all have to take full flexi. However, on a monthly basis, you mm. will be paying the bank like 10, 15 ringgit, depends on the bank charges. Mm. So in this case, you just go into your online banking, mm. you click on the extra payment, you put in an extra amount of money, then yes, your interest rate will be reducing. Mm. However, if you take the semi flexi, you just you, you, you just jump out the the like, like you mentioned, right? You, you mm. put in two thousand five hundred. The bank actually will just withdraw two thousand on a monthly basis. Mm. Your five hundred will be bring it to the next uh next month. Okay, so what you should do right now is actually first mm. take a full flexi loan instead of paying the extra portion of the five hundred. Actually, which doesn't help you at all. Mm -hmm. 
you should actually just put 50,000 or 100,000 mm. right into the bank. Imagine today if you are taking a full flexi loan, mm. you don't have to submit any paperwork mm. or walk into the branch to tell the bank that you want to do extra payment. Mm. However, semi flexi, yes. Mm. But the good thing here is that semi-flexi, the bank don't charge you on a monthly basis for these services. Mm. You, you see the difference, full flexi and semi-flexi in terms of the charges and the procedure. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll, let me let me summarize. Mm. Now, if I were to have extra 500 every month, I want to settle early, there's mm. no point paying extra. Correct. Because it would, the money would just be parked there. Yes. So in the end of the year, it suddenly... I got extra six six thousand in the in that account, mm. right? So there's yep. no point. Yep. So might as well if you can save up the five hundred into mm. a lump sum, let's say ten twenty thousand. Yep. I should go to the bank mm. and tell them that I want to make I want to settle the principal. Yeah, you want to do extra prepayment. I want to account. do extra yeah. prepayment, mm. Mm. so I can do it across the counter or online. Can do. Semi flexi, most likely either you have to call in or you have to email to let them know that hey, I want to do extra payment. Mm. If you just automatically put in an extra amount of money into the account, they will just actually treat withdraw two thousand monthly basis. That's it. Mm. But however, if today you are taking a full flexi. Mm. You already can get access on the online banking on these services. Oh. Then you don't have to walk in. But the there's a charge to it, which is but 10 there's like a charge on a monthly basis of 10 to 15 ringgit. Mm. That's why normally when it comes to full flexi, I would encourage like a business owner or self-employed yeah. to fully utilize, to take full flexi because they have a cash on their business side yeah. that they can put in to okay. save on their interest on the daily yep, basis. Yep, yep. Because mm. like if I'm an agent, like this month I close good deals, then I got extra commission I put in first. Yeah. Right? Mm. Then it also allows people to take out, right? Yes. So full flexi allows people to take out. Correct. Send me allows, but you need to apply. You need to apply. And they charge like how much? Uh? They charge a certain amount for every withdrawal. Uh. Every withdrawal, correct. Yep. Mm. So that's why if you, again, this is a whole different level. If you are a wage earner, every month, ding, ding, one sec, meaning you your income will not suddenly, wow, triple, how I wish. Uh, <laughs> then you can go for the semi, semi flexi because there's no extra things right? but because of the possibility that you might have bonus they can always go to the bank and say that I want to do extra prepayment and that will settle the principal portion so now instead of 500,000 now you owe only 400,000 the money amount is still the same but the apportionment for the amount to interest and principal is different get it yeah so if you're a wage earner like business owner your sometimes good season especially durian seller good season bad season then when you got money, you settle early first. But just in case I need cash flow to get in more stocks, I can always withdraw. And that is very similar than to OD, right? Correct. Uh, so mm -hmm. OD is another different facility altogether, which is very similar to this. Well, while she is writing, right? Um, like my wife's car loan is done on uh, interest reducing format. Yeah, so that's why it makes sense then for us to settle the car loan whenever we have extra. But like for me, a very silly mistake. Like, like in fact, I'm still doing it. Like today I'm learning stuff or so. I thought like my uh, OPR revision, the money installment is like 800 only. But every month my rental is like 1,004. I'll just pump in 1,004 like whether or not. Apparently, it's just going to be a surplus amount in the bank. Not doing anything extra to the principal also, which is silly. Right? Very, very silly. So, well, I learned something today. And yeah, so just now when you talk about that semi, that format of financing, right? It's very similar yeah. to OD, OD, overdraft, right? So imagine last time people like to take OD before actually we have the full flexi loan. Mm. The one that I give the example. Mm. So last time why businessmen, they like to take OD because the amount of money you can withdraw in and out. Mm. So for example, today you've got the money, you just park in 300,000 over the outstanding of 500,000. That anytime emergency, you need the money for your business, you can always just take it out again. Mm. Okay, so it's very flexible, just like the full flexi. However, today, since we already have a full flexi, let's talk about why OD no longer makes relevant sense. or makes sense. Okay, mm. because see, OD interest rate is actually slightly higher. We are calculate 5 to 6%. So take a 500,000, same as your housing loan just now. You are paying a monthly basis, 2,500 contributed to your interest rather than, I think we are talking about mm. 1,300. Okay, so that makes sense why actually right now if you are a business owner, you are getting a 
housing loan, you just take the full flexi rather than the OD in this case. Mm. 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 But there's also a reason why banks push OD to a lot of people like, because the interest rate high. Like. Um. Hey! <laughs> 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 but anyway, but I, I'm very familiar with OD because my mm. dad used to run businesses so mm. he takes a lot of OD. And it's just that he, he never withdraws anything. Just that mm. it's a nice amount there just in case things happen. Uh. Yep. I mean, imagine today, I mean, for whoever that's uh, currently taking OD, right, 500,000. So imagine today you have the extra payment of 500,000. Mm. So no longer here in this case will be zero, right? So in this case, you are paying a zero interest to the bank. Mm. Uh, so that can be why, why some, some of the uh, people like to do it. But think about it today, you already have a full flexi, mm. which is the same yep. concept. Yep. So housing loan, that's why normally whoever that have a lot of the, we call it the savings, one or two extra payment, we encourage to just take the full flexi rather than the yep. OD lah in this case. Mm. Uh, Sidetrack, uh, for business owners, right? Like I personally know a few where they take housing loan to run businesses. Mm. Meaning like, for example, I have a I have a workshop that I buy the shop lot that I run business for 10, 15 years really, they are settled whenever I can because it's a full flexi. Then whenever I need cash, I take out the housing loan as my cash flow to run my business instead of taking an overdraft. Mm. So let's say I need 100,000 to get in more tires today. I Okay, I get in all the stock. Then whenever I got good sales, they are settled back in before they tabulate. Because it's tabulate daily anyway. So I save up a lot of interest when you do that whenever compared to uh, five to six percent and here we talk about one percent here over this huge amount right it's a lot of money yeah so this is something that sh people share to me like why you buy a house not really for the real estate but for the financing and it's very attractive right now like our financing is so low mm. in comparison to what we have in our parents days la. yeah correct mm. last time it's at 10 percent at 1986 oh my god 10 percent like five years mm. <gasps> how to pay oh. <laughs> Right? Okay. So I think that's all a very intro. I hope a very intro session. We will talk about uh, more things. We will go into DSR calculation. We will go into other things on the next episode. So stay tuned. See you guys. Uh, we're going to grab a break and continue later. Episode two, guys. Bye.